I'll be assembling this pump organ kit I got from Earth and Tree Miniatures, which is made by Chris and Bond. I really love these Chris and Bond kits because they're perfectly to scale and often have beautiful detail. This kit includes lots of pieces and the instructions are pretty boring, so instead of telling you step by step how to assemble it, I'll be focusing on the finishing techniques I use. All of these plastic pieces were made in a mold, so I'm starting by cleaning all of the pieces with rubbing alcohol to remove any grease, oil, or mold release. This particular type of plastic is really easy to paint with regular cheap acrylic paints. I'd like to go for a mahogany looking wood tone, so I'm mixing red, orange, and brown acrylic paint. All of these plastic pieces have really fine wood grain detail on the surface. To achieve a better finish, I'm brushing the paint on in the direction of the faux wood grain pieces. The instructions advise removing all of the pieces from the sprue and cleaning up the edges, but I'm painting most of the pieces in place. For any pieces I do remove from the sprue, I'm using a utility knife to remove the little burrs. And then you can finish smoothing it out either with an emery board or a little piece of sandpaper. I've probably spent hours of my life crawling around in my office looking for fallen miniatures, so I'm keeping tiny pieces like this attached to the sprue until I'm ready to assemble them. After one thin coat of paint, you can still see the yellowish undertones from the plastic, which makes it look more dimensional and realistic. This piece on the left has two coats of paint, but I think it's too opaque, so I'm sticking with one coat. This single splotchy layer of paint looks a bit unfinished, so I'm watering down some antique wax from Waverly and adding a bit of red to create a wash over top. This wash was applying more like a paint, so I added some more water. I recently discovered you can add acrylic paint to your antique wax from Waverly to change the tint and tone, so I'm really enjoying playing around with this technique. The instructions state to use some kind of cement that's meant for bonding plastic and polystyrene pieces, but I used a super glue throughout and it worked just fine. I'm attaching this side piece and using the front piece to keep it stable and make sure it's at a 90 degree angle so it doesn't dry in the wrong spot. I'm holding the front piece in place while the super glue bonds. I won't be showing you piece by piece how I assembled this, but just follow the instructions. I assembled the top portion and the bottom separately. These little pieces get attached without being glued in. I'll be using this piano in an aged Halloween themed project, so I'm aging the keyboard with some antique wax from Waverly. I'm getting creative when it comes to aging the black piece of the keyboard. I've seen Bentley House Minis age black with some white washes, so I'm following her approach and using white wax from Waverly. I sanded the plastic to add a bit of tooth and now I'm brushing on a small amount of the wax just to subdue the black and make it so it doesn't look brand new. The kit comes with these adorable knobs, so I'm painting them white to make them look like porcelain. I've seen some antique knobs that have this sort of look, so I'm emulating it. I meant to just paint the tips of all of the knobs white, but I'm a sloppy painter and they ended up completely white, and that's fine. To age these knobs and subdue the white, I'm adding a wash of Antique Wax by Waverly. You could also make a wash out of acrylic paint and water. This type of porcelain knob has a hole in the center and is attached by a nail, so I'm simulating the look of a nail by adding a dot of black paint using my Dollar Tree Ball Stylus. I mostly followed the instructions, but above this row of knobs, there's supposed to be a cover that comes out and covers the keys underneath of this little piece. I'm skipping adding the cover since this will be displayed permanently, and I'll instead assemble the piano without it. But since I'm excluding a piece, it leaves an awkward gap. I cut a rectangle of cereal box and colored the edges with a black sharpie, and I'm gluing the row of knobs to this piece of paper to fill that gap. I'm carrying on with the painting by adding some black acrylic paint to Waverly Wax. Miniatures are often too small to cast their own shadows, so I'm using this darker shade to create some forced perspective. I'm adding this dark color anywhere a shadow would be cast, like underneath the shelves and on the underside of these little bars. I'm using a very dry brush and scrubbing some more of this darker color into the corners. You can see how the shadows I added to the underside add some weight to this piece. I carried on aging the bottom half of the piano as well. I have an age to this side of the piano so you can see how it contrasts with the side I added the black to. The stool hasn't been getting any attention but I've been working on that as well. I haven't glued the top on because I haven't decided whether I want to upholster the top or leave it faux wood. 
let me know what you think I should do. This final detail was an afterthought, but it adds so much to the piece, I'm really glad I did it. I'm using some antique gold rub and buff to emphasize the tiny details on this piano. I'm using a fine brush to apply the antique gold and really trying not to get it on areas I don't want it because it is hard to remove. I'm certainly not using my favorite brush and I used rubbing alcohol to clean the brush afterward. I went outside of the lines and got some gold on the piano so I'm trying to cover that up with some black and I went over top of it with some black shaved chalk pastel to cover it even more. I added some gold to the nice chunky carving detail on the bottom of the piano as well as many of the fine details. The very bottom of the piano has a smooth edge that doesn't have any faux wood detail so it was harder to paint with the acrylic paint. These areas were pretty thin and sparse so I covered the entire bottom rim with some of the gold and it looks beautiful. There are indented areas that look like carved wood that I'm emphasizing with some very watered down gold acrylic paint. I'm using a really fine brush to drop it into the indent so it's flush with the surface and letting that dry. I sealed the whole piece with matte Mod Podge. Check out this longer video if you'd like to see more from me and consider joining my Patreon either as a free member or as a paying member for $3 a month.